Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be talking about how to get faster without lactic buildup. So, obviously there's a reason why you want to get faster without lactic buildup. Especially if you're running a 400 meters, purely because as you get through the race, a few things will fatigue you um, and make it so that you start to run slower. These mostly should be because of you using up all of your energy or close to it. So by the end of the race, you're just relying on dregs. So now you're too tired to um, maintain your form and have maximum force production. That's really the only reason why you should ever feel tired in the race because you've overexerted yourself. And we'd like this to be because you inefficiently used your energy instead of because of other factors like lactic. For example, it is possible to run 100, 200, 300, and a 400. I'm not going to go to the middle distance and longer distance stuff because that's not my area of expertise. But it is possible to run all the sprint um, distances that are longer than eight seconds because that's that's actually how long you're actually able to maintain anabolic activity without feeling tired it is possible to get through all of that and this is only really possible through efficient use of your energy and that's why we want you to um, feel tired because you inefficiently use your energy which is relatively hard to work on but it can be fixed however if you are tired not because of energy usage which you probably would be as well but because of lactate that's a problem because we don't want you to be tired because of lactate because lactate teaches tense and slow running especially when you're training because when you're um, training for your races it's important to remember that your body will respond to what you do in training if you teach your body lactate lactate in training then it can only really reproduce lactate in the race obviously that doesn't really make sense but the way your body would operate would only operate in a way where it produces a lot of lactate. Because in your race, I'm not in your races, in your training sessions, you try to produce a lot of lactate. Whilst lactate is not what we want, it's what we don't want. Because it teaches tense <coughs> and slow running. And it damages rest and recovery. The, the rest is in between reps and sets. And the recovery is days after you've done the workout. You, you, they just dampens the way everything happens because what ends up happening is the quality of your sleep gets reduced drastically due to lactate still being in your body and you're not aware because it really is very damaging for your body which is why we don't want to chase lactate when we're training um perfect races usually occur with unnoticeable amount of lactate buildup this is really just due to relaxation just best use of the athlete's energy economies so look at the hundreds and look at the hunt i wouldn't say 200 meter because you saying bolt did look quite dead in that but it is possible to do for a 200 because I'll, I'll get to that i'll get to why in a second in a 100 meter you've seen you saying bolt 1969 958 um tyson gay and um johan blake both run 969 and in all of those races none of those none of the athletes looked fatigued in the 200 I want to say Usain Bolt, but he did look quite fatigued in, in the 100 meter, 200 meter. That's probably because he ran the race wrong. If he ran it properly, he would, probably would have went sub-19. But if you look at Johan Blake, the way he ran that 200 meter when he ran his 19.26, um, um, it was very clean. He, there wasn't much, he didn't feel much fatigue and there wasn't that much or any lactic acid, lactic acid buildup purely because of how he ran the race because he made sure that he focused on if he was to fatigue, fatigue due to loss of energy instead of um, lactate. But because of how he started off in that race, there was a few other things that helped make sure he didn't feel lactate. And if you look at the 400, Wade Van Niekerk isn't really the best example here because he tends to just blast through the 400 in a sense where his form is just perfect, but it kind of seems like he's hoping for the best. His, his 400 meter races do have a lot more skill to it. But it's very rare for you to see um, Wade Van Niekert, um finish his race, like start slapping hands with all the athletes and not start putting his hands on his knees or sometimes even collapse on the floor. So for the 400, when we, when we come to world records, it's much better to look at Michael Johnson because when you see him, it's quite evident that he is not tired in his 400 meter races, barely ever because of how he runs the races. So he's not able to feel lactate. And this is the goal that we want when we're actually training 
forget the races we want this when we're training because your body will repeat what it remembers and if your body remembers lactate you can only really repeat lactate it's the same for whether this is something else if you want to get better at block starts or top speed sprinting if you want to get better then you're going to have to do that a lot and you have to make sure that the quality is high otherwise whatever you do in training is going to get repeated in the races races replicate replicate training hence lactate will never allow you to reach your true peak if every single time you chase every single time you train you chase lactate for 100 meter sprinters they tend to not really have any lactate problems because um then there's the race is too short for them to feel lactate they will be built up but it'd be so marginal this it doesn't really affect their race much but for 200 or 400 meter um, sprinters this is a much much bigger problem especially for the 400 because if you run the race wrong it is possible to fill that lactate for a good 130 meters that whole 100 meter straight is literally called hell zone purely because of the fact that most sprinters when they do the 400 99.99 percent of them they fill the lactate by the, the final the straight final straight with 100 meter mark all records are broken in extremely relaxed states like i just said with all of the other ones um it's important that we understand that if we want to achieve our best whilst we're experiencing we want to stay relaxed and we want to make sure we just glide along the track if you actually stay relaxed and you glide along the track the chances of lactate building up or to be reduced we want to make sure that when we're sprinting we try to reduce the possibility of lactate build up as much as possible so now i've just basically attacked lactate so if you're not supposed to be training whilst chasing lactic how are you supposed to be training and you're supposed to be following um ag training anti-glycotic um, training where essentially it aims to um, increase the mitochondria in fast twitch muscles um, to allow it to allow the muscles performance to be able to peak for longer without feeding any lactate the reason why this is important is because if you've ever done any if you've ever been a middle distance or longer distance sprinter and you felt lactate before whilst you're sprinting um if you ever push through what you even if you haven't actually I'm, there's a couple of examples if you ever push through the lactate what you realize is um your body is in, it's using a specific, um, it's using uh, an, an energy system that allows it to um, use oxygen. So it's able to cleanse the lactate after a while and your body is just clear of it so you continue sprinting. If you, But when you're sprinting, you don't actually feel that, which is why if you was to continue blasting through uh, 400 after you finish the race, which I wouldn't recommend, the lactate will just continue to build up and up and up and up. And also, if you ever try to do um, push-ups or usually um, tricep dips, because this is the easiest way to feel it, and you blast through them, you'll quickly feel the, the lactate build up after a while. But if you continue going, because the movement is so slow, generally, what will end up happening is the lactate you feel in your triceps will just fade away. And you just, but essentially, you can do these an infinite amount of times once you've felt the lactate and it's just been flushed out of your system. This is purely because your body has been able to use oxygen whilst you're exercising. And whilst we're sprinting, we don't use oxygen because we're moving too fast for us to be able to produce oxygen. However, that doesn't mean we don't use oxygen at all um, because the energy systems um, in the body, there's, I'm pretty sure there's three, um, they don't all fire one at a time. Like you don't just use your aerobic respiratory system or just your anaerobic respiratory system. You use all of them at the same time, but depending on how you're running your race, more one more is used. One is used more than the other. So if you're sprinting, you're going to be using your anaerobic respiratory system more than your aerobic respiratory system, where it'd be switched if you was doing, say, a five k, for example. And with anti glycotic training, the goal here is to get in those fast twitch muscles more mitochondria. So you, your aerobic respiratory system is able to kind of work in a, a better state than it normally would because it's not really firing too much, if at all, when you're running the one, two and four. But if you're able to increase the mitochondria, so you're able to do more stuff with oxygen that like you're breathing in, because you're still breathing in oxygen, then you're going to be able to perform better because when you're sprinting, you, accum you accumulate oxygen debt. And by the end of the race, you're panting heavy purely to re to 
to try and remove this oxygen debt that you've occurred because of the fact that you're using anaerobic, you're using mostly the anaerobic respiratory system, which operates without oxygen. Um, but if you was able to increase the mitochondria so your muscles are able to use oxygen for a bit longer before they start to actually fatigue, you can decrease the, the chance of lactate building up in the muscles, which is obviously extremely important because if you can run an entire 400, with no lactate, which would be a godsend for many, many athlete, athletes, then as long as you're also staying relaxed, then you hitting your personal best is, is just guaranteed. It's, there's no other way you could not hit your personal best and surpass it purely because you, you're now no longer training hard, but you're training smart. And if you want to improve in track, that's the number one thing you need to remember, train smart, not hard, because quality is your best friend, not quantity. There's no point in me doing 160 meter sprints every day because my body's just going to break and I'm not going to get faster. But if I was to do three or four or five and keep it there, whilst uh, again, that isn't too smart because I am supposed to vary it, to, I'm supposed to vary it. I'm still going to get a lot more results with a lot less than if I was <coughs> to try and do 100. This is saying even if I didn't somehow break down whilst trying to do that 100. Now to train for, train for AGT, or the anti-glycotic training, then it's important that you understand that you're only able to really um, do maximal exertion efforts from between five to 15 seconds. I would recommend with um, five to three minutes, three to five minutes rest, I would recommend that as this is probably new form of training to you, it's very important that you start with as little work as possible and as much rest as possible. So I'm talking five seconds of maximum exertion and five minutes of rest. And over time, you build up to 15 seconds of maximum exertion and three minutes of rest. Do at most 10 sets and start, like I said, start five um, five seconds of work, five minutes rest and, own, and usually make sure you time yourself because like I said, in sprinting quality is said said it many times quality is king so we want to make sure that your performance doesn't drop below 10 percent <laughs> say for example your 60 was eight seconds and 10 percent of eight seconds is i i'm not even sure to be honest because this wave of the the, the mass and the numbers because it goes down it's probably like 792 i'm hoping it's going to be simple numbers uh so that means if your 60 best 60 is um 792 um and you, um, so your best 60, 79, 792, and you run 60 repeats, but you, um, so you can only run for like eight seconds at best, which after a while of training for AGT, this would be within an acceptable limit of five seconds and 15 seconds, but your times went from 792, dropped down to eight, and then they dropped down to 801. Um, this is beyond the 10% performance drop. So even if you was like gonna do 10 sets of 60 or 10 reps of 60, and now you just no longer were able to hold it, you should stop. Don't continue doing work if the performance has dropped because your body, first of all, this type of training is special and you shouldn't really be doing more like that. And second of all, the, if you're just going to be doing quantity for quantity sake, then you might as well just go back to doing the lactate work you was doing before, because you're probably you're probably not going to be doing this work as you're supposed to be. You're supposed to do this, and you're supposed to feel tired, but you're supposed to be like, oh, okay, I can go again, because this is relatively easy. That's just stuff you can do on the track. So make sure when you're sprinting on the track, you run within a five seconds to 15 second variance. So if you was a 10 seconds flat sprinter, this could be like... 50 meters to 150 meters the most likely you're slower so you are going to have to recalculate this so maybe 15 seconds might only be 130 meters 120 regardless of where it is make sure you don't surpass that limit and you probably also want to get make sure you're timing your you obviously would be timing yourself because you need to check your performance for the 10 percent drop we want to make sure you are timing yourself because if you, for the first time you do this, you say 130 meters is fine, but you want 130 meters in 16 or 17 seconds, then this means that the whole workout's been ruined essentially because you've gone beyond what you're supposed to do. So you want to make sure you stay within that range always. Off the track, there are a lot of things you can also do. Um, 
instead of doing focusing on um the the sets you actually want to focus on the reps though you can also focus on the sets so believe it or not um another form of agt training is burpees burpees i love burpees they're they're hell but i love them uh 10 sets um 10 reps of 10 sets with um usually 30 seconds on 30 seconds off and you do that obviously that is longer than the, the the 5 to 15 seconds that i recommended however generally this is or this is actually a decent form of training but if you want to try and simulate um training more similar to how it's supposed to be then you can literally just do work for 15 seconds and then rest for free the reason why i say that because with burpees you you're not doing much work and you recover quite fast so three um three minutes is quite good you can also do two but three minutes is also good but if, if, if that's too easy i would really recommend you just do the 30 seconds of work 30 seconds off and stop doing work when you get the 10 reps because doing more than 10 reps would push you beyond the 100 meet the 100 reps the limit you're allowed to have when you're doing um the exercises with reps and the sets obviously so make sure that when you're doing the burpees if you do do the burpees you train like that you can also do other stuff like squat jumps in fact you can do anything really as long as you exert maximal effort within a certain time frame if you're now if you're going to touch weight then this is where things start to get slightly different because it's no longer in the burpees frame set of 30 seconds work 40 seconds rest but it's back to the um, 5 to 15 seconds of maximum exertion then five to three minutes of rest and you want to make sure you stay within that because you're going to be lifting more than your body weight repeatedly and if you're doing this properly you're going to be doing this at a fast rate you want to be doing like for example back squats full range of motion extremely slowly no these would be if there, these would be back squats for example full range of motion extremely fast or maybe quarter squats um as fast as possible with it for five to 15 seconds uh and then you stop for 10 and you stop rest and repeat only 10 sets at best as long as you start to mimic your training more into an anti-glycotic format you're going to see a lot more results obviously i'm not saying you're not going to see results the way you are training now but if you want to see fast results i'm pretty sure that anti-glycotic training is just one of the smartest changes you could make purely because if you already want to run well then you want to ensure that the way you train is what you is similar to how you want to perform in a race because there's no point in working really hard in training and then staying really relaxed in a race when your body's struggling to understand how that works purely because of the fact that it's rarely ever under the circumstances other than when it's racing if you like my video, like the video, let me know in the comments section below. Um, check the description because anything I forget to say in the video, I always put in the description. And if you like my content, subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. Um, I post every two days at 1pm Greenwich Mean Time. If you don't know when that is, just hit the bell and then you'll be notified instantly.